everyone. I hope you're doing well and enjoying the summit. I certainly have been inspired by a number of conversations that have taken place this week. As you heard Alex say, I'm Dr. Tasha Austin Williams. I'm a principal at Deloitte and I lead the work that we do in Deloitte's US Artificial Intelligence Institute for Government, which is all about bringing a number of government leaders together, as well as academia partners, nonprofits, as well as small and large businesses to really have the conversations like we're having this week on all things AI and to move the conversations from a theoretical discussion into more of a practical implementation discussion and figuring out how we do that in the most authentic way. Why authentic? Because this highlights our commitment to developing AI solutions that are trustworthy, that are efficient, that aligns with human values and experiences, and that are capable of enhancing human well-being and productivity in very meaningful ways. And so as we think about our continuing journey to use AI for good, I want to leave you with three transform transformative thoughts. First, I want us to talk about a narrative related to AI that's not as popular today, and that is leveraging AI to unpack our own human biases and doing it in a way that leads to equitable outcomes. We don't talk about it that much today because we are focused on the biases that comes with implementing these solutions. But when you get this right, you can leverage AI in a way that unpacks our own biases because let's face it, we all do have them whether you want to believe that or not. And so the best example or one of the examples I can give to help bring this to life is related to some research that I've done in this space where I was looking at college students' applications. They were looking to apply for scholarships and humans around the table were either declining or approving those scholarships. This was a diverse population of students that were looking for other ways to fund their college journey. And so applying for scholarships was the next best resource for them. As we looked at this data, it is impressive and very interesting to see that word choices really do matter. What the humans that were making the decisions were doing was looking at the application features of the students, as well as looking at an essay that was part of the application process, understanding the way they use their words, the way they put sentences together and all, makes a big difference when a human is evaluating whether you qualify for a scholarship or not. And so as we look across this spectrum, we see a number of words that are used, choices and words used by students that are highly correlated with the student's chance of likely receiving a scholarship. But look as we go across the spectrum at the rest of the word choices that are used. These word choices were less likely to receive a scholarship. That is eye-opening when you think about the words that are sitting on this slide. I mean, you see, we would expect someone that's a straight-A student or someone that's in extracurricular activities to likely get a scholarship. But when I'm talking about COVID, well, we all have a COVID story. When I'm talking about struggling, we all struggled in some way, shape, or form. And childcare was the one that really stood out to me because I was a young mother in college and I applied for scholarships and I actually didn't get them. And so this is what we call a bias preventer tool that I built that leverages a number of algorithms to look at the choices of words and the way students use sentences and so forth and build out correlations of where a student is likely to get a scholarship or not. The organization that was granting these scholarships were quite surprised because this isn't the outcome they wanted because they know these stories are real and these students also deserve scholarships. And so the bias preventer method is a great method to use before you finalize your decisions to make sure you're comfortable with who you're going to give a scholarship to versus who you're not going to. So that was concept number one that I want you to remember because it's a narrative that's not really talked about as much where we leverage AI to check ourselves. All right, next I want to talk about responsible use of AI. You have heard it over the last two days and guess what? You're going to hear it again from me because it is just that important. What you're looking at is an overview of Deloitte's trustworthy AI framework, and it touches on a number of areas that we have to consider when we try to get these technologies right. 
When we think about fair and impartial, there's a number of questions that go along with each of these pillars. When I'm thinking about fair and, and wanting to get away from exacerbating bias, I could be asking questions such as, is my data representative of the communities that I'm trying to solve problems for? If it's not, then there's no point in relying on the output of the AI solution. When it comes to transparency and explainability, am I able to explain what the AI was doing? Why did it make the decision that it made? Can I explain that? When I think about responsible and accountability, how are the consequences, should something go wrong with the model, impacting a number of stakeholders? Who are those stakeholders? We're seeing a lot in the media today around a number of solutions that have gone wrong. We gotta figure out who's accountable and who's responsible for those. When we think about robust and reliability, it's important that I can rely on the models. If the models aren't reflected of real world scenarios and real world conditions, it doesn't matter uh, what the output is. And so it's important that I'm able to keep those models updated as an example when it comes to robustness and reliability of our technologies. When it comes to privacy and security, I cannot amplify this enough. It is important that if you've given me your data, that I am using your data in a way that solves it in an that solves the intended purpose for me using that data from the beginning. It is important that I can protect your data so that it doesn't leak and create harm, especially when it's sensitive data where it could harm unprotected or protected populations. It's important that I protect the data and that I have consent to use it in a certain way. So those are a number of examples. There are so many more questions that you can ask when it comes to using this type of framework. The beauty is, again, there's a lot of information in the public space about trustworthy AI and what it takes to build your solutions in a responsible way. So I just wanted to re-emphasize that again because we're gonna keep talking about it until we get it right. All right, last area is how are we using AI at Deloitte to address some of our SDGs? And so, First use case is all about looking at AI as a virtual assistant for malaria and control planning. So what if we were one step closer or another step closer to putting an end to a number of global diseases? Well, that is what the Global Fund is focused on. They are focused on preventing and ending diseases to include AIDS, malaria, tuberculosis, and even COVID. And particularly with the malaria team, they struggled with trying to research and do analysis on lots of data that's coming in and lots of funding requests that are coming in so that they could actually fund the right programs that are alignment, in alignment with um, addressing a lot of the malaria uh, diseases, that cases that we're seeing across the, a number of countries. And so to help the malaria team quickly accelerate their research and focus more on decision making, we built a processing document solution with generative AI such that the malaria team could focus more on making a decision and less time on trying to compile lots of data. This solution has proven to be very successful in helping the team be able to accomplish that. It's done three impactful things. One, again, it's allowed them to accelerate their research. Two, through a prompting solution with AI, they're able to gain even more insights, asking questions, trying to research the data, looking at country level reports to make sure that they get everything they need to make the right decisions for the right funding requests that can actually most appropriately address the mission of ending and preventing malaria. The other benefit here is that they're using evidence-based decision-making, not a hunch, after I've sifted through a lot of data, but evidence-based decision-making, which is one of the best ways to back up your decisions, and that's exactly what this tool has allowed them to do. When we think about the Global Fund's mission in strengthening the health systems, this is all about addressing SDG3 when it comes to good health and well-being, as well as when it comes to strategic partnerships. And by the way, this particular use case is not just applicable to the healthcare space. You can leverage this to allocate funding resources and get to evidence-based decision in a number of domains, even beyond healthcare. All right. Second example is all about deforestation. 
And this actually hits on a number of SDGs. And so do you know, and maybe you do, but I'm gonna just put this stat out there just for you to really think through this. Did you know that every minute we are losing the size of 30 football fields to a forest? We're losing that much in forest when it comes to visualizing the size of 30 football fields every minute. That's what we're losing. That is an alarming rate when it comes to deforestation. Why? Because over 1.6 billion, billion people depend directly on the forest for their livelihood. And the forest is home to 80% of land-based wildlife housing incredibly complex and unique ecosystems. And uh, this accounts, deforestation accounts for up to 20% of global carbon emissions. So it is important that we combat illegal deforestation given the number of areas that are dependent on the forest. And so we worked with the World Wildlife Foundation alongside BCG, AWS, and a number of academic institutions to build Forest Foresight, which is an AI model, a predictive model that can predict the likelihood of deforestation. What this model does is it uses a satellite imagery as well as geographical data to actually predict the likelihood of deforestation. It does that through the computer vision uh, components of the solution. Any change that it senses in the image, such as the logging of a new road, road, will actually send a signal to the local authorities to send someone out to go and assess that area to make sure that no illegal deforestation is happening. This has been proven to be very successful in Gabon as well as in Indonesia, where we were able to predict deforestation and able to avert illegal deforestation before the damage became irreversible. And so we are looking to help the WWF reduce illegal deforestation of tropical forests by 30%. And we're well on our way. We are now going to take this into Latin America and we're scheduled to also deploy this technology to at least six additional countries. And so we look forward to continuing to fight. This is a very important mission when we think about climate action, when we think about life on land, and when we think about all the partnerships it's going to take to be successful in this area. All right, one more use case. This is all about subsidies. And I don't know if you know this, but there are billions of subsidies that are available to people every year. The problem is a significant portion of those subsidies go untapped. Why? Well, one, people don't even know the subsidies are there. It's like scholarships. You don't know what scholarships are out there. Uh, two, people don't understand the eligibility criteria. And three, the application process can be quite complex. So this is about really navigating a very complex subsidy landscape so that farmers can tap into those subsidies. And so the Dutch agrarian sector has been focused on sustainable agriculture as well as food systems. And the idea of having farmers support that mission is important, but if they're not taking advantage of the opportunities to leverage subsidies, it becomes a challenge. And so there's lots of missed opportunities today. We built a solution that essentially uh, takes an AI chatbot, converses in the user-friendly way with farmers to help them match up to those subsidies that they are eligible for, and then it makes a recommendation on the subsidies that they should apply for. That is huge when it comes to taking advantage of all the money that is out there and trying to focus on sustainable agricultural systems. And so we were able to do that, and we have started this project as a pro bono, where we tested it on a number of folks. We got some great feedback from farmers saying, it's the first time they've been able, ever able to do this. And now we're gonna go live with that solution this year in September. And so we're pretty excited about being able to change the game for the farmers and getting them to take advantage of the resources that are out there at their fingertips to support the SDG of responsible consumption and production. This is all again about the right partnerships to make this work. Now, that was the last example that I had for you. I hope you found that all of these examples are not just applicable to the domain in which I spoke to them, 
They are applicable. That technology can be ported to do very similar things in other domains. And that is really what this is all about as we look to continue to achieve uh, the sustainability development goals. And so if you have any questions, I am in the app. You can connect with me. I'm happy to connect with you offline on LinkedIn and also happy to connect you directly with the teams that built this technology on the ground. Thank you very much and I hope you enjoy your time for the rest of the week. Amazing. Wow, 15 minutes sharp. Well done. Thank you so much.